Hello all, this is Mike from Southbound Paranormal. Um, recently I've had a couple questions about the equipment that I use and I figured uh, this morning I'd just do a video on that. And um, I think the first question I ever had about it was um, from, if I remember this, if I can pronounce the name right, on YouTube on, under the Echo Box session at Baraka Home Cemetery. Uh, Rhiannon English asked what kind of camera I was using because she's never seen a night vision camera that has, you know, that has a purple tint to it. Well, um, uh, Rhiannon, again, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know. Uh, that would be this. It's, uh, it's an HD uh, camcorder I picked up from Cleveland Paranormal Supply. I'll put the link down below, or possibly in the video with my new uh, video editor from Filmora. Yes. Um, yeah, this isn't just like one of those slapped together uh, cameras you get, because a lot of times what happens is some of these companies go in there and they just uh, uh, take out the little filter and then that's it. Uh, they went, uh, Cleveland Paranormal went to, uh, uh, went and did a lot of work to these cameras to get them to display full spectrum, so. Um, I highly recommend them. Um, and again, that's Cleveland Paranormal Supply. And as you can see, um, I'll try to get it in the full frame there. This is my action grip, uh, or, or whatever they may call it now. Um, got this for about 30 bucks at Fry's Electronics, but you can get them cheaper, about 20 bucks on the internet. Um, I like it because it puts it the camera touch away. It's not getting in my way. I can keep it a narrow profile without having to worry about bringing my elbows into a uh, into a door jam anywhere. Uh, but also, um, I can mount my phantom light to it. Uh, anybody that's done work in the field before recognizes phantom light. Uh, now this is not a full spectrum. Uh, LED lamp. This is actually infrared. And the best thing about the uh, uh, about the uh, about the camera itself is that it switches between full spectrum and IR uh, depending on the light source or even just back to uh, just regular light. Uh, you still always have that purple tint because it is full spectrum. Um, again, uh, yeah, Cleveland Paranormal Supply. I like those guys a lot. And Phantom Light, you can get them at, uh, I think it's like phantomlight.com. Again, I'll put the link down below. Uh, this is roughly about $50, $54, I think it is. And um, this particular, the Phantom Lights, I'm not sure if they changed the power source or not, but these are usually like a 9 volt battery. So I always keep those in stock. Um, so that way. I don't run out of power. Uh, usually they're good for. I've had those thing. I've had I've had the fan light running for maybe seven or eight hours before when the LEDs went out on it. From having to deal with all that uh, losing that much power, but other than that, yeah, it's about a pretty good lifespan on those. Um, I do recommend uh, if you get these particular cameras. I think they still use the Fuji NP uh, model batteries on them, little credit card batteries. I do recommend getting like one or two of them. Usually one of them is good enough to last about three and a half, maybe four hours. Um, I recommend getting the, uh, whenever you look at them, sometimes, I'll pull this battery out, is, uh, you'll see here, this is just a personal recommendation for me, uh, you'll see that, uh, yeah, MP60, and you'll see this is a plastic casing. This is good because some of the cheaper ones you'll get uh, have a uh, foil encasing on them. Like a little, and what it will happen sometimes is that um, the way they're constructed, what will happen is is that the battery won't be able to vent the gases out like it should, and it bulges, which makes it hell putting a little lid on there. Uh, just a personal recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> now the next camera that I use that I use the fan light with rather successfully is. Uh, it's the video you'll recognize on some of the older videos that I did there, like 4x9, the old 
uh, boxy kind of uh, video is Panasonic DV400D, if I remember right. Yeah, in PV DV400D, um, mini DV camera. Love it. Um, I'm going to have to replace it sooner or later. Um, still uses FireWire, which my current computer still has a FireWire connection on it, which is awesome. Uh, this is the one I use for streaming most of the times when you see me uh, streaming with my headset on and everything. Um, when it comes to uh, infrared cameras, or not infrared, sorry, well, they refer to them as infrared, but they're uh, night vision cameras. Um, starting out, especially on a budget, go to the old 90s, uh, late 90s, uh, or middle 90s, up to like 2000, uh, you know, king quarters. Because at some point, Sony decided to stop using uh, night shot on the lower end cameras, so. Um, that kind of put a crimp on things. Uh, but the thing is, when they started using their Bions uh, sensor or whatnot, uh, they used them on smaller sensors, and it causes uh, more graininess in the picture. So you want, if you are looking for a good camera, look for one with a big sensor. If not, just go with what you can afford. You don't have to get big, expensive equipment. I bought this off of eBay for 40 bucks, so it does its job well. And I'll keep on using it till the day I don't have a FireWire uh, connection anymore to upload the videos from it. And uh, that'll be the day I bury it with tears. <laughs> so long, Mr. Camera. You have a good one. Um, and the next camera is my still camera. That's uh, a Sony DSC uh, DSC H1. I bought this back in 2005 for about four to six hundred bucks. It's a five megapixel camera. Um, I I think it still does, but it has a lot more options than some uh, DSLRs, especially for its time. And um, I really like it a lot. And I'm probably going to eventually upgrade it to whatever is the current uh, uh, paradigm. You know, like 18 megapixel, 20 megapixel, whichever. Uh, that looking for now. I usually don't get into that until I. I'm ready to buy one, and then I do all the research and geek out, you know. I'm just that way. <clears throat> now, I did have a film camera when I first started out, because uh, I did have some early investigations when I used to work for uh, OSU, not work for, but go to OSU Oak Mogi. Um, I have a 35mm uh, uh, Nikon that I use. Uh, I haven't used it in quite a while, actually. I probably... See, is the battery still in there? No, it's not. Okay. Yep, uh, 35 millimeter uh, Nikon N55. Uh, it's a really good point and shoot, and you have some of the advanced options if you want to uh, 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 change some of the settings. And this can use uh, the whole Nikon. Uh, I think it can use practically any Nikon lens on it, whether it be uh, GPU operated or not. And I haven't used this one in many, many years. Uh, I bought this one as a gift to myself uh, whenever I first got my first uh, IT degree, and I uh, really liked that a lot, so I figured I'm going to get myself a camera. Covers that for video. Um, I guess the next one would be, uh, let's see. So the next one is going to be, I guess, the audio portion of it, and, ah, here it is. This is a Tascam uh, DR07. Uh, I like these particular recorders. A lot of people like to use the zoom ones. I'm, I don't have any problem with them, but this one's pretty simple. It's pretty small. And it's a lot better than some of those ones you see on some of the other shows. I mean, not to knock some of the other shows. They use what they have, which you should. You don't, you don't have to go out and spend extreme amounts of money. But I, being somewhat of uh, just a little bit of an audiophile, not too much. I kind of keep that reined in. Um, I like my audio to be rather clear. So this particular model does not have a speaker on it. 
but you get to choose what type of formats you record in, uh, whether it be WAV or MP3 format, you can change which type of uh, setting that you want to use, uh, whether it be 16-bit WAV, 32-bit WAV, uh, the type of uh, the type of uh, you know other settings like uh, like kilohertz settings for WAV files and whatnot, or kilobit settings for MP3s. Um, I've gotten a second Tar Center. You can't find these anymore. You'll find uh, you'll find its uh, later models uh, from the DR07, which have all the bells and whistles on it, but. Uh, this is the one I primarily use. I'll use it till uh, the day the uh, circuit board burns out on it. Um, I got this for new, originally, I think it's like $99. And it's typ typically it has the USB connection there with the SD card in it. And I have an 8 gig SD card in there, which I've never needed more than 8 gigs, really. 8 gigs is more than enough for maybe like a whole, you can leave it. Yeah, location the whole night, maybe the whole day, and um, still have enough room at, at the end. Just you have to worry about the batteries. Um, it does have an option for a plug. I have never bothered to get one. Uh, probably need to at some point. But uh, uh, Tascam DR or yeah DR07, excellent recorder. And some of you Ghost Adventures fans may notice or may know what this is. This is the Altec Lansing Orbit. Um, the model number, there's a couple of different models. This is the uh, IM227. Some of them uh, are geared towards uh, MP3 players or MP3. Uh, what I recommend when looking for a speaker or even headsets at that is the frequency response range. Uh, that is. Uh, the lowest frequency that it can do and the highest frequency that it can do. Um, I forgot the frequency response on this one, but usually, I, like on my uh, headset, where'd my headset go? This is another piece of equipment that I use for my audio while I'm listening. I always use a good pair of headset uh, headphones. And um, these are the, these are Technics. Uh, RPDH-1200s. You can find the newer versions of these which have little fancy options, especially the video and the microphone options to record. Um, this has a uh, 5, uh, I think low end is 5 hertz, um, which is roughly about what you get on a normal telephone. Not a cell phone, but a telephone. Telephone is usually about 4 or 5 hertz. And this goes all the way up to 55,000 hertz, or not 55,000, 50, uh, 55,000 kilohertz. Or megahertz, I think it is. Uh, I'll put the descript. I'll put it in the description below. Um, excellent headphones. Uh, had to replace the uh, ear pads in them recently, and they're really easy to get. They're about twenty, thirty bucks to get the uh, pads. Unfortunately, there's no replacement for the headband, so I got this. You know, I shaved my head, so this is a little more easier on my head. And a little water there. Next for audio, it's going to be uh, the uh, PSB11. You guys probably already know uh, what this can do. For those that don't, this this is like the uh, SB7s. That you see used on Ghost Adventures or whatnot, except there's just like two of these, one on either side, uh, both AM and FM. Um, control the sweep rate. Now this one can only only go. I think it it has fixed on S old SB sevens. You can only go up to I think like two hundred uh, sweep rate on uh, FM. I think it was no no. Um, oh well, it's not powering on either, but. It had a real limited sweep rate on these first SB7s, and on the SB11, or PSB11, you have, for M and FM, anywhere from 50 to 300 milliseconds, and it also comes with a temperature monitor, ambient temperature monitor. Now, if you use the temperature monitor from personal experience, leave it on the table, 
or on the ground wherever you put it because this will catch on your hand uh, to the heat from your hand and it'll set the alarm off nothing worse than trying to get some audio evidence and the moment you get an answer this thing goes off and you just lose the answer altogether um, as with uh, this B7 uh, before whenever, whenever you want to ask a question you have to put your hand over the speaker to uh, ask your question and release it to hear the answer well no longer you have the mute button here and another reason for me to get another orbit uh, Altec Lansing orbit is for the second channel so I can use amplified speakers if I'm in a setting where I'm going to be far away from the SB7 um, and on the other side here you'll see a couple switches uh, One's for, uh, here, here we go. I'll put this on mute really quickly. One's for the temperature sensor. The other one's for the light. And then um, the second switch here is for the antenna. This is AM and FM off. This is AM on, FM off, and this is AM and FM on. I primarily, primarily just like to use it in the off position. And that's the uh, SB11. Now on to a few pieces of equipment that you guys probably already know about. Uh, uh, some of my older investigations will see this particular meter, but a lot of you that are familiar with Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, and some other paranormal shows will recognize uh, this. The Mel Meter. Uh, this is the um, Mel 87, or yeah, 874R uh, REM, which it not only doesn't do the EMF readings and the temperature readings, but it also functions as a REM pod. Comes in handy. Um, there's a lot of functions on here that some of them I mainly don't use except for backlight and uh, when I want to just do uh, you know EMF sweeps live because if you use it with both the temperature and the EMF the processor shares uh, between the uh, uh, both sensors which is called time slicing which there's a bit of lag between the sensor readings so what you want to do if you just want to do live EMF readings is hold that down till it beeps and you just got a live EMF readings and that's picking up my old school lamp in the back <laughs> so uh, that's it you just hold it down again till it beeps Got temperature and EMF again, and and uh, with as with like the uh, SB11, there is a flashlight built into it. <clears throat> Let's turn that off. There. And now for classic, that I think which 90% of all investigators have now. Uh, it's rather cheap and you can, you can get, get them for about 60 bucks. K2 meter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this I love using the most because, uh, especially in videos where you can get a, a visual response to a yes or a no. Or verifying in a place like Black Bear Church where there's no electricity going to it. All the wires and everything burned, melted out, so there's no electricity in it. And getting a reading in places like that is like, hey, wait a minute. There's no electricity in this building. Where's this reading coming from? Well, there's a couple choices that you have. Could be a spirit, or it could be some sort of electrical circuit that you're not aware of that's connected to the building, which I've rarely ever seen. But it's worth investigating when you find a weird reading in a in a in a building that supposedly has no electrical power to it. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, <clears throat> that covers the audio, the meters, and whatnot. I guess the only thing that I have left <clears throat> would be uh, some metaphysical items that I have. 
Uh, some investigators knock it, but um, through experience, I know that these work. So, uh, if you guys want to try them, uh, I recommend going to uh, Enchanted Forest in Fort Worth. I'll put the address in the description and link below in the uh, below. And um, yeah, uh, first thing to go with usually an investigation to protect yourself. Uh, that I find it works. Especially from uh, some some attacks and whatnot, be some smoky quartz. <clears throat> uh, this will help out a lot, uh, especially if you're going into a really bad uh, location. It's really good. Uh, another piece I carry with me at all times is uh, kyanite. Uh, this. To explain it in the most simple term, it acts like a barrier between you and others or you and spirits uh, feelings so you don't have to deal with uh, their negativity or whatever they're trying to impart on you. If you've ever been in a large crowd at a concert and you can feel that emotion going just right through you, you know what I'm talking about. And this will help kind of uh, filter that out or block it totally. And then... Which another one that I carry with me at all times, or try to, it's a really big piece, it's a tourmaline. Uh, in a sense, it keeps you grounded. Um, it keeps you grounded and helps you focus a lot of times, especially if, um, especially if you're feeling uh, out of sorts a little bit. This kind of helped me out on a couple of little investigations. Um, well, this, I need to get a smaller piece because uh, putting this in your pocket and walking around with an investigation, it's like, is that a piece of uh, kyanite? You're probably just happy to see me. Uh, it's a piece of kyanite. <laughs> and I think some of the other stones that I have here always some quartz. Uh, this helps with uh, with activity a lot. Uh, also, it can act because it acts like a conductor of electricity depending on how you use it. Um, I've been told that you can actually put uh, pieces in all four corners of your house and then have like a little piece that's shaped like this and have it pointing towards the nearest exit. Uh, if not, you point it up and it's supposed to conduct the, the spirit energy or spirits out of the house. Haven't tried it. Wanted to try it. See if that'll work. Maybe, you know, maybe sometime, if uh, if we have a chance to meet up and investigate, we can probably try that out. Um, I'm up for trying most things, uh, especially like this. Uh, it's just something, some things, along the lines of well, that are like faux metaphysical, like the uh, like the Charlie game, which people are talking about in media. I don't follow that too much. That's just a bunch of kids that want to get attention. So. Um, that's about it, and um, again, I'll just put the links and descriptions below, and I'll probably just uh, end up using my film, or not my film, my video editor to do most of that, so uh, that's another thing I bought is uh, Filmora. Excellent video editor, haven't had any issues with it yet, does whatever video I want to put in there, except with the... Uh, Unlike Windows Media Player, which if it's not a WMV file or a supported file format, or uh, to be more precise, if it's not a Windows video format, it'll crash on you every single time. And um, but it's good if you're starting out. Uh, you just have to put up with it until like me just have a chance of getting a better editor. But as always, thank you for watching. Like, favorite, and share all the videos that you want. Um, and again, if you guys want to donate. Uh, I have a GoFundMe uh, campaign going. Um, don't feel cheap if you can just donate a dollar or fifty cents or whatnot. I don't. I don't mind. I'm not going to judge you. Uh, um, it's going to take a while for the YouTube uh, hits to come in and register how much I get from YouTube. Which, again, all that 
uh, all the funding, all the everything, all the cash received is going to go towards equipment, travel expenses, and upkeep. It's going to go strictly for that. It's not going to be used for anything else. And uh, again, thank you for watching.